All right, today's session is going to be about remote desktop uh, and the, the, the methods of tunneling a remote desktop through an SSH server. Now, what I've got here on my local network, I'm going to use my local network, but the principles are the same uh, with a public SSH. I have on my network an SSH host here. The IP address of that SSH host is 192.168.2.12. In Windows, uh, you can use the application PuTTY. I'm going to load the application here. I'm going to type in the IP address of the SSH machine itself. Now, in PuTTY now, what I would need to do is scroll down to the SSH tab here and select Tunnels. And then I'm going to select the local ports accept connections from other hosts. And then I'm going to choose a port here that I would like to connect to another machine. Now, RDP, Remote Desktop, standard port is 3389. Now, for this example, I'm going to use the port 3390 because what I'm essentially going to be doing to connect to this other machine is using a local port on my local machine and tunneling it through the SSH uh, port. So I'm going to add the source port here. This will all become apparent once I open the remote desktop session. So I've put the source port as 3390. And then I'm going to put the destination of 192.168.2.200. Now this machine is another machine on my local network. Now when I'm going to RDP, I'm going to type the IP address of my local machine as I'll explain in a moment but with the destination I type the, the IP address on the local network that you're on the network that you are connecting to so if you know various hosts on a different network and you know there's a, an SSH uh, server running and you have the creden correct credentials for that SSH then you will know the local area network of that remote network so Again, the 192.168.2.200, and I'm going to call on that and connect on port 3389, which is the standard RDP port. And then I'm going to choose Add. Uh, I could do this again if I wanted to, and I'm going to put 3391 again. Uh, this is an additional local port that's not being used. And then I'm going to select a remote host of 192.168.2.10, colon 3389. And I'm going to add that. So what I'm doing here now, I've added two hosts, which is on a remote network that you know very well. Obviously, you will need to know the the, the IPs of the the machines on that remote network. And I've chosen two ports on this local machine of three three nine zero and three three nine one. I'm now going to go back to the session, ensure that I have the correct IP there. Again, this can be this would probably probably be a uh, public IP if you're doing it from uh, a, a, another network and you would like to connect to your home machines. So I'm now going to open that connection. I'm going to log in uh, using obviously the, the SSH uh, credentials. Let's have a look. Log in. Now here I'm logged in to the SSH server. Now what I'm going to do now is open up an RDP session. However, I'm not going to type in, as you can see here, I have the 2.200 address. What I'm going to do here is type in the local machine, which is 127.0.0. Generally, it's 1. Now, for some reason, Windows 7 doesn't like if you put the 1, uh, which is uh, the loopback address of the local machine. Uh, it seems to work in, in XP and 2003, however on Vista and uh, Windows 7 this needs to be a 2 and colon and the local port which you, se which you selected for the machine. Now we selected 3390 to go to 2.200 so I'm going to select that it's then going to ask me for the credentials of the machine I'm trying to connect to and it should, I'm hoping, open the connection to the remote machine. Oh, I'm typing in the wrong, right, apologies for that. 
it's the wrong network there. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, and it loads, sorry, on the other screen. Again, there's at the top, 127.0.0.2, which is a local. And that now, on port 3390, is being tunneled through the PuTTY session onto the SSH host. And then being connect is then connecting to the 2.200 on the correct port of 3389. Uh, just you can have multiple sessions open so I will minimize that I will now open another session and we know that we have tried to connect on one port already I'll now change that to 3391 which is another machine and I will then choose oh and it's opened again on the other machine and I'm now going to type in the password once again oh wrong password And there you go, again, 127, again, it's using the non-standard 3391, and this is because the SSH host itself is listening for a connection on 3391, and then tunneling it to the relevant machine. Now, on this one, just so you can see, IP config on this one, the IP address for this one is 2.10, which is what we selected in the tunnel. Now this is this could be used for for many things. Uh, if you are connecting, if you have an SSH running at work, maybe, uh, and you're the network admin, and and it was required for you to connect to many machines, and you haven't got uh, maybe a, a a gateway set up to to be able to remote desktop onto all the machines. Uh, and again, because you're you're doing everything over port 22 SSH, uh, the the traffic is is secure. Now, there are ways of reversing this. So if I was to create a tunnel between uh, this machine and a remote machine, kept that tunnel open, if I was on a remote network with that SSH that I'm connected to from my home machine, I could then RDP to the SSH server and it would then tunnel the traffic back to my home machine. But that is uh, for another video. Uh, which I will post up very shortly. Um, so I hope that that video has helped. Uh, if you guys need to know how to do this in Linux, then I will post that up uh, and get that video posted so you guys in Linux can do that. Uh, hope you enjoyed the videos. Thank you very much.